Today, we're gonna to talk about what is the difference between AI, generative AI, agentic AI, machine learning, and deep learning, because there's a lot of confusion around what those terms mean. So I'm going to go through them with you. I'm gonna use the Stanford University definition of these terms. Hi, I'm Harper. I'm a machine learning engineer and AI expert. I've been an ML engineer for about the last 10 years. I have two degrees in computer science and engineering, specializing in artificial intelligence from Stanford University. I was at Meta building machine learning and AI systems there for about four years and then I was founding engineer and then head of AI ML at a startup that was acquired by NVIDIA. And when I was there, I started making AI guides. And when I was at Stanford as well, I also was a TA for PhD level core AI courses. I have always loved teaching. I used to run tutoring in my high school. I am now a full-time AI educator. I teach AI online. I love it. And if you want to learn AI, you're in the right place. Let's go over what generative AI is versus agentic AI versus machine learning versus AI versus deep learning. There's a lot in that, so let's talk about it. So we need to kind of create a chart here where all of these categories, generative AI, agentic AI, machine learning, and deep learning, all fall under AI. AI is the simulated intelligence of a machine. Machine learning is when AI learns from data. So it's when the machine learns on its own. There are types of AI that aren't machine learning. So for example, one good example I like to think of is Siri. So Siri processes your voice and then turns that into text, that is machine learning because it's learned from massive amounts of audio and then learns like given this sound wave, this is the text that it looks like. So that part, the audio to text is machine learning. But then when it actually was analyzing text and maybe it's gotten a little better recently and they're trying, <laughs> they're trying their darndest. Apple is having a hard time with the whole machine learning or I guess now it's just considered AI wave, but they had AI early on, but it wasn't so much machine learning. It was like recognizing keywords after after turned into text, it would look for keywords like weather and then locations or words that indicated direction. And so then it would say, okay, given that, go find directions from point A to point B or find the weather in this location. So that was kind of AI, but it wasn't really machine learning because if you gave it something outside of its, you know, hard coded kind of domain of, of words that it recognized and then actions to take, it would just say, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that. It were a machine learning system. It would have learned from massive amounts of data and had like a more broad knowledge. So if you phrased something in a less common way, because it had looked at thousands, millions of transcripts, it would be more likely to understand what you were getting at, as opposed to like just looking for certain hard coded phrases that are very common, if that makes sense. So yeah, so machine learning is when a machine learns from data. And for example, a hard coded non machine learning AI chatbot, you could hard code it to say, you know, if you receive hi, hello, how's it going, then respond, hi, I'm doing well, how are are you today or something. But then if that model receives howdy, it's not going to know how to respond because it hasn't looked at massive amounts of data necessarily. It just knows what you've kind of hard coded it. Whereas with machine learning, it's looked at, as I said, millions of transcripts. It's going to know, oh, okay, howdy. I've seen that before. <laughs> that's a term that is not super commonly used, but it is used. And that's a greeting. That's a like a hello. So I'm going to respond hello. And so it, you're not giving it any explicit rules. It's just learning patterns from data as opposed to having this kind of set of rules. Machine learning systems are much more more robust, right? Because I mean, think of having to hard code all possible directions that a conversation could go. And that's part of why Siri was so limited and something like ChatGPT is so not limited, so expansive because ChatGPT has been trained on text from all the internet. Next is generative AI. Generative AI is when the AI generates something novel, for example, an image or text. So ChatGPT is generative AI, it's generating text. DALI is generating images, other types of image generation models or video generation models or audio generation models, music, what have you, those are generative AI models. Those are examples of generative AI. Not all AI is generative. For example, a self-driving car, when it's driving down the street, it is taking in images and classifying what it's seeing into different categories. So it's saying, okay, this little portion over here, that's a person, that's a stop sign, that's a green light, right? And so that's not generating anything new. It's just making smart decisions. So generative AI is the kind of AI that a lot of people tend to know about, but AI is so much broader than that. For example, ranking system. So your newsfeed, for example, shows you what it thinks that you're gonna like. Your Instagram feed is in an order depending on how engaged it thinks you will be with it. That is AI, that ranking decision of different pieces of content and choosing what order to put them in on your feed. That is a type of AI that's, that was like the hot AI back in 2018. And I was on the newsfeed ranking team. I remember as an internet meta and I was like so excited when I got put on that team because ranking was one of the like hottest things back then. So ranking is a type of 
AI, again, not generative. It's looking at existing data and drawing insights from it, but it's not like generating new text or anything. It's just making a decision about data that it sees. So the decision is given 100 pieces of content, what order should I put them in? Agentic AI is AI that has side effects. So it actually like does things out in the world. I, I like to think of it as having side effects. I think that's a good example. So for example, Siri was actually an early example of agentic AI because yes, it wasn't necessarily machine learning, but it was searching the web and giving you definitions and finding weather reports and texting your friends, you know, that is agentic AI. So Siri was early in a lot of ways as well. Whereas ChatGPT at its core, these large language models at their core are not agentic. They're just word generators. But now they're being augmented with the ability to search the web or to take other actions on your computer. That's agentic AI. So again, it tends to be right now large language models. So these word generators, these generative AI augmented with the ability to do other things like control your computer, search the web, what have you. So that's agentic AI. And I also want to say generative AI is basically all machine learning at this point. Yeah, these word generators, that is, that's pretty much all machine learning. I mean, I guess you could argue Siri is also generative AI, but doesn't, I don't know if you would because its outputs are pretty, like it's kind of just taking outputs that were already there and piecing them together. Whereas generative, it's actually creating, it's sampling from probabilities. So when a large language model creates something, when it's creating text, it is taking the input that it's received. So your prompt, plus everything it said up to the point where it's about to generate a new word. So it's generating, when you see it generating like one word after the next, it is running itself over and over again. It'll like literally every word it generates, it then passes everything it said so far, plus the prompt back into itself and then runs it over and over and over again, runs all these mathematical equations for every single little sub fragment of a word that comes out. So it's running so many times. And every time it runs, it is sampling that output, that token that it generates. And the token is Considered, it is a fragment of word. Every token it generates, the token is the output of these large language model systems. And then that translates in English into a fraction of a word. And all these tokens together create sentences, create paragraphs. Anyway, for every token that it's generating, it is sampling from a probability distribution of words. So if it has a vocabulary of 10,000 words and it runs through its model, your prompt plus everything the model has said so far up until the token it's about to generate, it puts a probability across all those 10,000 words that it could possibly say that it has its brain and then samples from it. So it's not always going to choose the most likely word. So it is at the point in the sentence, the cat in the, it runs it through the model again. The next word being hat might have a 90% probability, but there might be, you know, 9,999 other words or tokens that have that sum up to 10% probability. So nine times out of 10, it'll choose hat, but one time out of 10, it won't choose hat. And then it'll go down another route. Kind of like those games that you played in school where you would write a word or a sentence and then pass the piece of paper to your friend, right? You would get a piece of paper you would create a story, all of you would contribute either one word or one sentence and then pass it to your friend and then you would continue from where you received. The model chooses something that isn't hat. It chooses cat in the bathtub. Then now it's going down that route. One time out of 10, it's going down a different route. So again, generative AI systems are generating new text. It's novel. It's from this probability distribution. Same with image generation machines. It's sampling the pixels that it generates from a probability distribution of, of likely pixel choices, right? Like the, the different colors it could possibly put. But again, it ends up just being a combination of pixels chosen by probability. Okay, deep learning. Deep learning is using neural networks. So deep learning is a type of machine learning. So we've got AI, we've got machine learning, we've got deep learning under machine learning. It's a type of machine learning that uses neural networks. And neural networks are a type of model architecture that are said to be originally modeled after the brain. They have neurons that connect to each other. And really these connections are just a series of mathematical equations and large language models like ChatGPT, those are built using neural networks. So they are a form of deep learning, which is a form of machine learning, which is a form of AI. So most generative AI systems are also deep learning systems, but not all deep learning systems are generative systems because you could have deep learning. As I said, you do have deep learning for, we go back to the autonomous driving example that uses deep learning. So that classification system of looking at the image that it's received and classifying it as a stop sign or a green light or a person or all of the above that uses deep learning it's not generative ai so those are deep learning systems they're machine learning systems they're ai systems but they're not generative ai systems and they are agentic in the sense that they have side effects right like they're actually moving through the world right they like say okay that's a person so i'm gonna not go that way or i'm gonna stop to let the person walk by right like they're taking actions in the world based on the decisions that they're making with their ai models so autonomous vehicles are agents 
sense. They use deep learning, they use machine learning, they're AI, but they're not generative AI. So deep learning, neural networks. If you wanna learn about deep learning, about neural networks, my 10 days of AI basics series, I think it's day three or day four, we talk about model architecture. That's a really great video. I'm really proud of that video. We go through neural networks, the architecture, what the layers look like, what the neurons look like. It's definitely worth watching if you wanna learn more about deep learning and what that looks like. And again, deep learning implies that you have used neural networks for the AI model. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about that. And if you wanna run something by me and say like, what type of AI is this? Let me know. Oh, and I guess the last thing I'll say here is like a lot of people just have a misconception of what AI is. And I guess I wouldn't say a misconception. The definition that I'm using about AI is from Stanford. That's the Stanford definition. Some people argue that AI is not these kind of hard-coded systems anymore. Stanford, I think, would say that it is. I, I defer to the Stanford definition of them. And I think that that's kind of how the terms are widely used in academia and in research. So there are some kind of colloquial definitions that fall outside of what I'm describing. I think the Stanford definitions are probably the standard in the industry. I mean, some people argue that only deep learning is considered AI. I mean, okay, because yeah, I said something about how, you know, data scientists who do machine learning learning, they're doing AI and, and some people disagree, but I'm just using the Stanford definition. So, okay. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. And I look forward to seeing you here next time. Bye.